Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. We're back after a nice, refreshing weekend. Um, I've been working on this list for a long time, probably like probably close to a month at this point. I think I finally found uh, a good balance here. Uh, kind of the key was really uh, realizing, oh, we could just play four gemstone caverns and always choose to be on the draw to have a density of enablers here. But the um, the big idea here is that like the Through the Breach Eldrazi decks are pretty cool and interesting. The uh, Through the Breaching and Emrakul, very powerful. Through the Breaching and Ulamog when you have an Emrakul at Exile, insanely powerful. Like, you know, sometimes sometimes Through the Breach Emrakul isn't quite good enough. You're too behind and bored. They just like sack all their lands and kill you. When you Through the Breach and Ulamog with an Emrakul in Exile, you get this Annihilator 15 <laughs> and it's 22 power. The card is like... It's just so powerful, crazy. And like looking at these lists for a long time, I've really wanted to also play Goriel's Vengeance in these decks. You know, you're you're through the breach, you have you have eight great things to through the breach. I would also love to be able to through the breach them. Be able the mirror breakers, awesome enabler for Gorios, where one, it's just like a very high card quality where you can play it on turn two with Ugin's Labyrinth, turn one with Gemstone Caverns and Ugin's Labyrinth sometimes. Um, and then, and then, you know, set up for a, a next turn Gora's Vengeance on Emrakul or Ulamog. You can even respond to, of course, the Emrakul trigger, uh, with, it's, it's, it's because Fable, like the Discord doesn't happen until next turn. It's a really good enabler for, for Gorio's Emrakul because like, you don't want to have to go like taint and indulgence and then Gorio's all the same turn. That's, that's kind of difficult to have the four mana. So like you can cast the Fable the next turn, you get to untap your mana to cast the Gorio's, which is really nice. Um... And like I, you know, I've had this, I've had this thought for a while, and I'm like, well, you need another really good enabler for Gora's Vengeance. Ideally, something that's very fast. <laughs> ideally, something that's very fast um, to enable you to, you know, ideally win the game as soon as turn one, you know, or that that's what Pull from Eternity does. I will say that this, that's maybe really like an ambitious <laughs> wish, but that is what Pull from Eternity does. So this is. A weird time spiral instant. Put target face up exiled card into its owner's graveyard, and it's an instant. So, if you exile Emrakul or Ulamog to Gemstone Caverns, Ugin's Labyrinth, Devour of Destiny, or um, Serum Powder, I know we're playing Serum Powder today. A card I swore I'd never play, uh, but it is actually I think very good in this deck. Um, then you get to pull from Eternity that uh, card in exile into your graveyard, and kind of use this as an entomb. In fact. You know, we're going to be choosing to be on the draw every single game because we want to use Gemstone Caverns as an enabler for Pool of Eternity or from Pool from Eternity as consistently as we can. Um, and then also just like Gemstone, you know, being on the draw in a deck with four Gemstone Caverns ain't so bad. Um, but the idea is that you can win on turn one with like some like reasonable degree. Like it, obviously it's not going to be very consistent, but you can probably win on turn one with this deck more consistent than like any other deck in modern, which is... That, that's kind of a good thing to say. More turn one wins than any other deck in modern, but a turn one win is uh, using turn one pull from eternity to put Ulamog in your graveyard. Having an Emrakul um, in exile, this is either going to be with uh, Serum Powder, Devourer of Destiny, um, and, you know, and, and Gemstone Caverns exiling the, the Emrakul or, you know, exiling the Ulamog, you know, one of these two. Uh, but you're gonna need one of these, uh, one of these cards to actually get the other one in exile. Then you can Gorios the Ulamog and then attack for 22 uh, on turn one. Uh, Annihilator 15, so blocker also doesn't <laughs> doesn't quite stop you. Um, and so the deck is like pretty mean and lean and clean. It is like you are gonna, you you are basically always wanting to keep hands with either like uh, this combo or fast mana into Fable, Ring, or Breach, which is which is gonna be pretty consistent because the deck is like a lot of fast mana. You have four Caverns, four Labyrinth, you have some Talismans. Uh, it's not too, it's not actually even that uncommon to have like turn two rings because you have four Gemstone Caverns uh, and the Talismans also. You can go Je Caverns, Talisman, Ring on turn two. And so it's like, you're just, and you, you're just gonna mulligan very aggressively for these in your Serum Powder deck too. So uh, ex very excited for this one. It has been a long work in progress. Crystal Brand is better than Atraxa in this deck. I could actually believe that. Oh no, I chose to play first. Uh, blame that on the deck tech. Okay, so this, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep, I guess. The problem is I'm only Annihilator 3. But I think, I think turn, turn 2, Annihilator 3 is going to be fine. Although maybe maybe I'll wait a turn. We'll see. I want the option, so I'm gonna play this and put this Ulamog in the yard. Too bad I didn't powder a card of a higher mana value. Have I thought about green white birthing ritual deck anymore? Yeah, of course. Um, I 
of course we I'm, ho I'm hoping to get more progress on it at some point all right let's wait a turn Punish not choosing for, not punished for choosing play. Um, yep, yeah, I guess. I think I'll play the powder here. Checking for 10, Annihilator 3. Someone mentioned you can pull Sorcery Speed cards while Storm is going off. Not that it's likely to stop them. Oh, sorry, they're like cards that they can play. I see. I see what you're doing with pull there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was going to do anything that game, but I, I understand now. Okay, so in the draw against Eldrazi, I think in this matchup, I'm bringing in these Charmals, I'm cutting the Serum Powders, I'm clicking Submit. I think I'm clicking submit. Thinking about maybe maybe we're supposed to cut Devour over Serum Powder. Powder is pretty. Maybe Powder is better. Let's let's try let's try this. We can alternate. All right, I'm gonna click the keep button. They've got a Devour. Cutting Devour with Lab. I mean, I have eight other cards to imprint to it. Uh, I think, it, is that not just fine? It seems fine. So next turn, I'll main phase Surveil because of Gorios. Assuming I don't get, you know, Thought Nun Seared out of the game. Okay, I don't have anything in Exile at the moment. Build is kind of weird. All right, so I guess I'm just gonna lab my Ulamog and pass. Two, three, four, five, six, eight. Let's be hard. Cut. I guess I cut the devourers. <laughs> I yeah, I pitched a sacred foundry to Gemstone. I wonder. I don't know. I wonder if there was a better option. Oh no! I forgot to count their exile. Sorry, I forgot that they. I for, I didn't. I missed what they pitched. Ah, uh, that that might cost me a lot, because I could have just annihilator forward here. But we can we can go for it again next. We can go for it next turn. My bad. I, just, I missed that. I forgot that they devoured. So we can draw Pull from Eternity to Gorios, the Ulamog. We can draw Fable, we can draw Ring. Okay. Now... Also, another reason to cut the Devourers in this matchup is they don't really exile anything. Let's go to... Let's just go to Game 3. I know I have some outs, but... It's not looking too good, and... I feel good enough about the matchup. All right, so we'll be on the draw again. So this is probably a powder. It's a bit weird to get rid of two rings. I also have the caverns. I think we're still powdering. So this powder, it's nice that it gets Emrakul in exile. I'm gonna powder again. Then we'll just take a mulligan on the one lander. And then I don't love this hand. But this has a lot of good top decks. Uh, we could top deck Fable, Ring, Gorios, Through the Breach, and all these are good, and we have a Surveil, potentially. So I'm going to keep on six. Terrible keep, in my opinion, respectfully, last game. Uh, I don't remember the exact seven, but I, I thought it was fine. 
Certainly not the worst keep I've ever done. I guess this also makes it for a good top deck. Oh my gosh, sorry. I was too busy thinking about the terrible keep comment. I did not play my talisman. What's going on with me lately? I'm so off of it. I would have been able to Gorios this Ulamog here. Although maybe I'm playing around Kozak's command with this uh, misstep. What was the keep that was objectively terrible? So that was the game one we won. This keep is objectively terrible, where we get to go turn one Talisman and we have a Surveil Land for the Gorios. And we also have, like, if we just find any Eldrazi off of our Surveil or anything, we have Through the Breach. I don't know, y'all. This seems like a fine keep. Maybe like if surveillance are a thing, this is not a key, but like the same this can draw Fable Fable Ring, Emrakul Ulamog with a surveil land on the draw. I I I I think it's actually just like almost a clear keep. And so you could disagree and you could think Mulligan, but to say objectively objectively terrible keep feels off at least. Well, hopefully they don't have a second Kozlex command. Rough. Interesting. Wow. All right. I am going to concede. At the risk of it being objectively terrible, I don't want to mulligan uh, turn two fable. I'm going to pitch the through the breach here. This is a five uh, mana value in exile for Ulamog, which I think matters. And if I find an Eldrazi, I have the Gorios, of course. We tells in char, yeah. I think we're probably still not winning, but yeah, obviously it was a mistake. Uh, obviously it was a little stun locked. Yeah, yeah, charm all turn two, and then they can't micro spawn on turn three, but then they're still gonna be able to Kozak's command my my through the breach or my Gorios. Which is just such a blowout. Kozlex command, exile this, make two spawns. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Let's discard one, two. You got five permanents. No permanents. All right. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, I think it may be a conversation a little bit on how like what you're cutting for your sideboard cards. It's going to be a lot of times Serum Powder Devour, but the fact that Devour doesn't exile anything makes me just cut it for the Charmals here. I think kind of easily. So we have a Charmal, which is good. The pull isn't doing much in this hand. I think we're gonna Mulligan on the draw. So this hands, I have turn one talisman. If I draw any land, I have charmals and rings. I'm gonna I'm gonna click the keep. Any 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 land or talisman is 
like an awesome draw here. Talisman. I guess I won't be able to turn two charm off if I draw Talisman, but okay, there's a land. This time we're casting this one. Did you adjust your land count for Super on the Drawbridge game? Kind of. Uh, like the the combination of that and Devour is making me play like probably two less lands than I would otherwise. Yeah, that's that's what that hand is probably like Mulligan on seven, keep on six, objectively. They got a Urza's Tower there. So why don't we keep going after the Tower Plants? Not only is Obsidian Charmall a 3 mana land destruction spell, it is also a 4 4 flyer. Interesting they're playing Saga, not the other Tron piece. I don't know how Urza Saga is ever supposed to be fast enough to beat two Charmals here. Is it a big risk of setting out Devour with regards to finding lands? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. It's, you know, obviously it makes you a little less consistent, sure. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word big risk. But we're still a Serum Powder deck. We still have 20 lands, 4 Talismans. It's 24 mana sources. Alright. This deck is pretty fun. Um, Let's click the keep button. This hand, it, we have 12 outs to play Fable turn 1, Ring turn 2. And if we don't, we have turn three, turn 2, turn 3. So, I think I'm in. And I think we're going to put back the... Or XL the Blood Crypt here. So, so you turn one by, on their turn, Caverns, pull Ulamog into the yard, untap, play, land, cast Gorios on Ulamog, and you have to have also exiled an Emrakul. So you get two, pull from Eternity on, on their turn one, and then on your turn one, Gorios. Yeah, so we have 12 outs to turn one Fable, turn two Ring. Turn one Map. I will accept this. Have white man off the gemstone caverns. That's only throw there a five second land. No, no. If you have an Emrakul in exile, Ulamog attacks for twenty two, and twenty two and nine later fifteen. So if I draw an, an Eldrazi, I almost definitely need to Fable. Fable's also a bit better against Karn than Ring. We also get to play our other Talisman. Do you think a Grixis Wizards list with Frog could be any good? It gets to play Fatal Push and Thoughtseize? Uh, maybe. If I was going to play Grixis Wizards, I'd probably play Basim, Kitsa, Slat Tamio. As like, I don't know if I don't know if there's room for Frog, but Frog is very good, of course. Okay, no ring, no Karn. That's a deal. All right. Well, I don't have anything in Exile at the moment. My opponent, however, they exiled three lands to their Devourer. Not the most ideal. I'm still going to discard this. <laughs> the draw that, I guess. Um, do I want to just hit my opponent for 12 and then post-combat play a ring? Probably Kozak's command's a bit too likely. Oh, their Devourer is exiled. Oh my gosh, dude. Playing around Kozlek's command. I don't know, I, I, I did miss it, yeah. 
That being said, they didn't hit Tron, so it's kind of likely to just work now. I'm gonna uh, pretend like I <laughs> just drew this. Just uh, try to save face for my opponent, and obviously not from any of y'all. And this, you you want your opponents to think that you're good, of course. Four one three of the twenty two. Thank you. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Well, same sideboard plan. And to watch the ball, they'd be so mad. Well, yeah. Now they'll, but they'll really overestimate me going into next games. Mana Rock's good to modern now. See more of them. Yeah, Ugin's Labyrinth has made like talismans much much stronger. Mindstone talismans. Def definitely better than they used to be. One thing that's nice about being a deck that always chooses to be on the draw, your opponents will never choose to be on the draw in themselves, although I think it's probably right for them too. My deck is, I think, a good amount worse on the play. Okay, so we get to powder this, and having having Emrakul in Exile is obviously really nice. Kind of like card advantage. I'm going to mulligan this one. So... If we draw a land, we have a turn three Gorio Zimmerkul. All right, let's keep, put back a Gorios. You don't face Wrath decks. I would love to face Wrath decks, but you're right, we haven't played against any so far. We could also survive Ulmog into the yard if we're lucky. So I guess I'll Labyrinth my um, Ulamog now to maybe make my play a little bit more disguised. Because if I shock in Godless Shrine, uh, it's maybe a bit more telegraphed what the line is. Maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But I guess I'll do it all next turn. So we're hoping that they play a Talisman right now and don't have Kozlek's Command up. Nice. Oh, six permanents, huh? It'd be a shame if anything happened to those. Can also play this first. Can you pull your Mog? That seems to be good. Uh, yeah, I guess we could do Ulamog instead now and win the game instead of uh, just Imrukling all their permanents. That is pretty nice. Just, it's turn three, you're dead. Again. <laughs> a lot of consistency, a lot of redundancy. And I, I, what I like about this deck, too, is it's like, you have a lot of ways to do this with the Through the Breaches and the Gorios, and then you have Serum Powder Devourer for consistency. You have redundancy to Fast Mana with four Gemstone Caverns, and you also just have four Fable Four Ring that you also just ramp into with the Fast Mana. Just very clean. Um... Uh, but I don't know. We just kind of got outdrawn a little bit. I like. I don't think. I don't think we've really had uh, games where like our draws have just been really bad. You know. Although maybe I'm jinxing myself. So here, if I could put back one, two, and then I could try to turn two ring. Oh, sorry. I should be putting back one, two, and then exiling the Ulamog, of course. So we need to draw land for the turn two ring. I guess, yeah, I guess we are wanting to mulligan a lot, I guess. Aired Mason. Into the chat. Not quite a land. Welcome, welcome to the hand devourer of destiny. I would have loved if you were in here earlier. Welcome to the hand, though. Happy to have you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, Devourer, I hope I hope that an Ugin's Labyrinth is right behind you. All right, this was my hope. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to cast it. I I if they you know if you have a spell snare and a counter spell, I'm on good for you. I'm casting this.
Yeah, there's the Fable Draft deck. Most Telegraph counter in history? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the, how reasonable it is to try to play around it. They they could they could honestly have Galvanic Discharge there. It's not super likely. Yeah, no replacement ring. They have a Flage to just kill me real quick. No Flage, no ring of their own. It's a good start. If I see through the breach on top, I can put this into my hand and then technically cast it. My opponent shocks in steam vents, so maybe, I don't know. I don't know if I, I will do that if that's what happens, but I will surveil. Graver this or a Gorio's top deck is better. Nice. Um... Let's fucking go, dude. They have Odawara? Oh, just subtlety? Nice. Okay. For some reason, I was really feeling strongly I was about to draw Gorios. Delusions of grandeur, some might call it. I'm calling it Manifestation. And Jeskai has such a hard time against Resolved Ring. It's like a pretty big flaw of the deck building, to be honest. Just no bindings, no Narsets. Alright, so we'll bait a top deck counterspell on the Fable. I think they thought they had five men for hands. Yeah, I think they thought they had another white source. Good. Likely case. Give another snare, I guess. Snare's really good. We do have a an Ulmog in exile over here, and also Devourer. All right. Please sacrifice ten permanents. Thank you. We won this game. <laughs> We mold the five. Snare counterspell. We'll take it. Uh, I'm gonna run it back. Spike, what would you suggest to play in the main versus ring? Uh, I, I think there's a really good chance as Jeskai you're supposed to facilitate Leyline Binding. It's it's been done, it's not too tough. You can play less of these like MH3 utility lands. Uh, you could main deck Narset, which is viable. You could um, Play four prismatic endings, and you could play a another untapped or another color, but I don't love that as much as just playing leyline binding necessarily. Um, those are your options, I guess. You could also like you could also maybe play a, like four force of negations. Force of negation, I think, is really really good at the moment. Um, and even though it doesn't answer ring, it just like lets you tap out and have a harder much harder time for them to resolve it. It's so weird you don't see much Nadu playing lately. It's everywhere in paper. Yeah, I mean, it's just been like this on Magic Online. There's kind of like a, you know, almost an agreement, it seems, for people to just chill and not play it. All right, we're going to pow powder this hand. Mulligan away three of my rings. At least I'm not powdering them away. Okay, and then click the keep button. So we're going to bottom Emrakul. Reveal Devourer, reveal Gemstone Caverns, and then exile the Caverns to the Devourer. I guess I'm looking for Labyrinth to turn one Fable. Turn two Gorios. Oh, I guess I won't be able to Gorios because I have to put this in the hand. Uh, okay, just take Blood Crypt. Yep. Looks like they won't have Counterspell on turn two also. Didn't we want to exile Emrakul for Ulamog? Not when I have Fable Gorios in my hand, my friend. <laughs> Not when I'm going to turn three, throw an Emrakul at them. Hopefully.
Well, kind of easy start here. One, two. I was thinking if this was invert polarity, if they, if they, what, what happens if they win control? I guess nothing. All right, I don't have my, uh, oh, I, I do have my Surveilland exiled, so we'll just play the Talisman. Nothing happens, they have no legal targets. Well, they, but they control the Gorios, right? So that the Immercool comes into play under their control and then gets sacked, right? But then it's not their graveyard, so it's like a little confusing, maybe. So I'm going to play my land here so that I can hard cast a Devourer if I draw it. No, the Immercool is an illegal target because it's not in their graveyard. So, th so it gets countered because they control it and it has an illegal target. Why does stealing the One Ring with Avert give the player that stole protection the way it reads does not make it into the result, in my opinion? I don't know. I'm not a judge. <laughs> is uh, my my unfortunate answer to you is I don't know. I kind of I kind of agree. All right, let's, let's not play the land this turn. Um, obviously, it's kind of nice that we might be able to hard cast this this game, but. We might also draw Fable and want to discard this mountain, so I think we just don't play the mountain right now. Untap Steam Vents for our opponent. Stone Ring doesn't give protection. It does. If you if you steal a ring with a Commandeer or Invert Polarity, you get protection. I, again, I, I don't think I can really explain why it's that way. It says it does say if you cast it and you're not the one that cast it. Um, but I, I can confirm it does work that way. Uh, Magic Online, and I believe it should work that way in paper too. So this is seven, then eight mana after this. Wait, you're not counterspelling this, are you? They're doing this to try to escape Flage next turn. Stone Ring does not get protection. It doesn't work that way in Arena. Oh, it works this way on Magic Online. I, I, I assume as you're supposed to. I have stolen many rings and I don't get protection. Is this, uh, this is just on Arena? Because it, it does work that way on Magic Online. Stealing a ring, yeah, maybe we're maybe you're confused. If you st you have to steal a uh, you have to steal it on the stack, like with invert polarity, but stealing it with like Dak faded or something doesn't work. It doesn't work that way in arena. I see. So it so it's a mad. I assumed it was just supposed to work this way. Do we have any judges in the chat that can confirm that this is it's a bug? You didn't cast it, your opponent cast it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just assumed it was like a weird rules interaction. So we're going to one, not zero. Even if they have a counter spell, we could draw a Devourer, I guess. We could also draw through the Breach to win the game. Um, we could draw the Ring as a redraw. Going to game three. Lieutenant level two here, bug. Okay, cool. I did not know that was a bug. Okay, so on the draw, again, of course, we choose to be on the draw. I'm going to mulligan the seven. This is a turn one fable. So let's click the keep button. Um, so I can go bottom pull from eternity, then gemstone caverns away. Do I have to get rid of my ring? I guess I can just see what we draw. Well, no, I can't. Because if I, if I Gemstone Caverns away... No, I can, sorry, I can just Gemstone Caverns away Emrakul, Labyrinth, and Emrakul, duh. For some reason, I was thinking I, I couldn't just get rid of both Emrakuls here. Didn't have your uh, Steel Ring with Invert Polarity during a showcase match at the Pro Tour. I, I thought so, too. But did, did he get protection? I was going, okay, how are you doing? Good, look at this. That's what this is. The demonia? It's, your it's, level. it's finally at a good level. Yeah, that's nice. like nice. Yeah. We, we want to put squirt some more uh, bacteria in there. <laughs> We've been having some um, yeah, or like the we had we had a, a, a tank crash and it's been very hard <laughs> getting it to cycle again. And that's just confirming that the cycle is finally complete. Just very exciting. Fish are doing good. 
I think Sajin Corey could not agree on whether or not he would get protection. Yeah, pretty interesting. I, I believe that it's a bug, though. All right, so I think I'm actually going to ditch both of these. Cool, and then we can just play a Fable here. Our fish tanks making the stream background. Um, I, I would like to. There's kind of like... It's it's tough because like like Wi-Fi cameras are kind of like expensive and not that reliable, which is not oh oh my gosh, you scared me. I like I'm stretching a, a touch <laughs> Uh but I, I would like to, I think it would be cool. Okay, I lied. Sorry. That was your nitrate, which is still really oh, good. Okay. That's zero nitrate, but your ammonia is like only at like one. Okay. Which is still very good considering we were Really bad before. <laughs> but use the detoxifier. It was, a rough, it was a rough crash. All right, opponent is at 13. I love that we drew another fable. I'm going to play another fable. Do you have another counter spell? Fable over ring because we care more about ring. We care more about ring. Like Je Jessica, if if you if you can resolve ring early against Jessica, they like kind of can't win. We're also they also can have uh, the counter color target colorless card too, so you can play around that. But it also also to like a smaller extent, it's not as big a thing. But like resolving resolving fable is a bit better to do early because you just get to like we might just make enough treasures where we can hard cast a bunch of stuff. Wonder why your tank crashed to replace the media filter or something. Um, I'm trying to remember it, this. This again, it's been like a month at this point. Oh, sorry. It it it. Um, I I think so the problem was the food I was using was like this homemade thing by like a, a local fish store owner, and I love her. She's great, but she she gave me some kind of bad directions on how much to feed. So I was like, I was like definitely overfeeding the fish, which uh, I think contributed to uh, a big ammonia spike, which caused like everything to crash is, is my fault, you know, my, my, my fault for overfeeding too. But I was, I was just trying to follow the instructions of her who made the food and owns a fish store, but she definitely was telling me to feed them too much. And also like, there's like a lot of like live, like, you know, fish food in there, which I think also contributed to just the amount of ammonia in the tank, maybe. Does it crash mean they all died? No, we did we did have one death, but uh only only one passed away. Aquariums are rough. It's it's a very stressful and emotionally difficult journey. Okay, point down to seven. Does ring number two resolve? Obviously drawing double fable, double ring, and being able to play fable turn one. Really ideal in this matchup. The last two cards are not force of negation blue card, thankfully. It's a good pickup. We do have this Emrakul here. We could throw out our opponent next turn if they escape. I've always been into aquariums. Um, I, I've started this year. Uh, Esther got me aquarium stuff like a year before I actually start. Let me start. Let's get a forum prediction while I talk about this. So I, I've wanted to do an aquarium for a long time, and I just haven't been in a place where, like, like it, you can't really do it in an apartment. We just got the house, and so when we got the house, I, I really wanted to get into it. I've always wanted to ha be an aquarium guy. You do want to choose to be on the draw, which was a weird piece of the puzzle. Um. So if this hand draws, if, the, if we can find Ugin's Lab off Devourer, we can go turn one Serum Powder, turn two through the Breach Emrakul. If we find Gorio's Vengeance and something with Devourer, it's good. If we can find Fable, we don't have the mana to cast it. Let's Powder. I think this hand's super interesting, though. Okay, this hand just is, you know, turn four Gorio's Emrakul, so we kind of have to keep... Definitely love an aquarium camera stream. I, I would like it too. So I mean, I don't know. Like, I have a camera here that can do it, but I also like this camera. Can you can like see the wall art visibly? I don't know. It's it's kind of tough to to do it all, but I would I would like to also. 
Okay, we're looking for Ugin's lab. We're looking to maybe surveil Ulmog into the yard with Gorios. That would be awesome. Ah, a little... I mean, maybe we still can. What's the big reason for me to draw? We have four, we have four gemstone caverns in our deck, and we're using it as like a big enabler here. I don't know about that great about graveyard of the ring. We don't have the mana for it. I'd love to draw a labyrinth right now. So that allows me to try to through the breach. Of course, our Gorios, Immercool next turn. Uh, of course, they're very likely to have some counter magic, so I think we should be playing Fable instead. We could also maybe go end of turn, pull Immercool, untap Gorios. My opponent also may think I'm just like, okay, they, they shouldn't think that because I powdered. They did tap out, though, so, I mean, I'm going to throw an Emrakul at them and hope for the best, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> you can keep a permanent. I'm nice. You can have a permanent. Probably the Shaman token, right? Too bad they didn't crack one more fetch and couldn't crack any more after this. I guess sometimes they just don't draw a counter spell. Live stream the aquarium and green screen yourself with BSP vibe. Yeah, that's true. I did kind of get this background finally, like pretty presentable, but it would be nice. <laughs> a mini camera to a fish. That would be the dream. Yeah, so just just keep the token. Goes to two. So, I think this fable is kind of likely to resolve. Since they didn't hold up a counterspell last turn, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. They cannot crack any more fetches this game. So I still have another Emrakul in Exile. Through the Breach is now a life top deck, if, assuming this resolves, which I would expect it to. So we can draw Pull from Eternity, Fable, The One Ring, um, or Through the Breach is good top decks. But I don't know, Put it is rebuilding pretty well. Fable token really helps. Friend, show me your full mirror scam deck. You should play that. Looks sick. Uh, well, there, if, if you if you want to see some content of that, there's the there's some on YouTube. Um, we've played a good amount of it at this point, but and I'm sure we'll circle back to it again at some point. But probably not getting to it again today. Well, I'm gonna cast the ring. Gollum, four months. IDK, what to say? Woo, no ads. Let's go, Gollum. Thank you for the four months. Appreciate you. I know what to say. Thank you for your subscription. <laughs> All right, down to 11. They've already used two counter spells, but they also have a bunch of snapcasters in the deck, too. Resolve! Yes! Let's go! With Infamous Cruel Claw, do you think a bigger Mardu deck would be possible? Or maybe Grixis somehow. Uh, let me reread Infamous Cruel Claw. Yeah, that's the, the, the Weasel. I, yeah, this is a card I think I overlooked. I think this card is potentially pretty good with uh, Arena of Glory. It is, it is a 3-3 three, three right now in a format where there's a lot of bolts, so I'm not, like, in love with it. Um... And if you're talking about it in a Mardu deck, I don't know that I would want it to take the place of like Fable, Flage, Ranger Captain, whatever you think your three drop is, is whatever best three drop you think there is. 
But it's definitely definitely an option. Because I got four mana. I'm at seven. Not that the two bolts. Low are we going to lose? I don't know. I could throw an Emrakul or an Ulamog at my opponent maybe next turn. Might lose. If they have a snare, they might like instinctively snap it off there. Like my Fable Resolve last turn. So I don't think they have a counter spell in their hand. I think they're going to take some time and then probably sack a clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not great for me that this took so long. Technically not dead. I think Cruel Call's best decks are casting four and five jumps for free. You don't need to cast Emrakul to have a good time. I, I agree. Uh, I agree. I, th I I really wish that the card was like red, colorless, colorless. So you could also labyrinth it out. Um, I, I think it would be nice if you could play Cruel Claw with like other cards that are really good to Arena of Glory. So like Flage and then maybe maybe there's some other stuff like Hid Hidzuru and Hazaret. Uh, it could be good with like a bunch of in red MDFCs, like Pinnacle Monk at least. All right, yeah, Fable busted. All right, I am going to run it back. I'm going to use the rest real quick. Wait, wait for game two. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. 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 What is this warning message I'm coming back to? Vintage week two will be here in the client about 52 minutes. Wow. Okay. I totally. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was this weekend that this was happening. We probably could do some of this today. I, I want to definitely get like at least four hours of modern in though. Sounds awesome. Draws a lab. Let's mulligan. Powder this. And then with powder, it's kind of weird. So you put a, it's to some extent, it's good. Cause you can like, I can put labyrinth on the bottom and not excellent for my deck. But then the next card hand we see is six cards. And then the hand, if you mulligan again, the, the hand, the, the, so you see seven cards. I think you put two back. It's very odd. It doesn't really make that much sense to be honest. So let's keep this five card hand. I'm going to put back. A ring and then probably an Ulamog. And then I'm gonna look for Ugin's lab. Let me see, maybe maybe double check that that's what I want to do. Yeah, seems seems great. Maybe we could just keep a uh, second ring over the through the breach though. Oh, and my opponent has skipped through their first turn, not realizing I've chose to be on the draw. I guess I did kind of mess up. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just gonna take this uh, Labyrinth with the intention of trying to surveil into an imprintable, maybe. Now that I think about it, it's kind of weird that it's only happened once. Okay, so we're looking for... Would I keep any land? I, I think, I don't know, it's... Just hitting any imprintable is just game winning, probably, if they don't have, if, if they don't have force and... I'll keep a fable, but I think I'm going to try to high roll, just not keep a land here. Yeah, and then we, we have a lot of cards like this to draw. I don't think this is the stage two new features this weekend. I guess we'll see. The way the way I read that was that the feeder leagues were back. I mean, maybe I guess I shouldn't have clicked through the message. But that was the way I was reading it. 
All right, two games in a row. Another questionable tap out. You got Force of Negation. It said 64 minutes. Okay, I must have misread it then. I guess it doesn't change the structure of today's stream. Well, seems like they have the Force. And we don't have a lot going on. I'll take a draw step, but if it's a brick, I'm probably just not going to be able to beat Tamiyo, Hearse. I think maybe I should have kept a ring over the second through the breach. Pitch to flame, though. I don't think it really matters. We'll see. They put two on the bottom. Thinking about maybe flipping the Tamiyo. They flipped the Tamiyo, could resolve something. I think like Blue Red, this is probably like our worst matchup. They just have so many cheap counter spells. All right, looks like we're still fighting. Did it reach such a high roll? Yeah, it's kind of tough. I do think I'm going to do another one of this, this deck too. This deck is so sick. And then I'll leave with the blue Eldrazi deck that we didn't quite get through on Saturday. These matchups, do you ever just run up breach to beta counter if you have the mana? Yeah, I think sometimes. Just like into turn breach, tap them out, even if you have nothing in your hand. Or you have to have a card in your hand at least. Definitely a reasonable line. A little bit riskier while you're streaming, I guess. Not that it seems like our opponent's ghosting, of course. When could normies play a blue board cards? Tomorrow. Uh, well, they won't be in like mana trader stuff for a little bit, but they are released tomorrow. Okay, I mean, I'd have if I can find Emrakul or you know, okay, land, 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 land. Opponents to oh, they didn't pick up the force negation. I drew a land. They didn't minus on Force Negation. Obviously, they could just have another one. They could have a Spell Pierce, but we're jamming. We're jamming. Emrakul in play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if they if they keep if they crew the hearse, they can get rid of my Fable token. But then they would have to. They didn't crew right now, so they would have to keep her Magus and Hearse as their two cards. I guess if they keep just Magus, this gets shrinked by the Tamiyo. So if I attack, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep these two, maybe. Maybe I should attack the Tamiyo. Yeah, they're just going to ultimate it, right? Doesn't feel great, but... They are just going to get to ultimate the Tamiyo, which I think I lose to. Could you play Strict Proctor in this next sideboard? It's a bit bad with Labyrinth, but it, like, brains so many of your opponent's cards. Does it? Like, does it, like what cards do we care about as Gorio's combo that Strict Proctor stops? I don't think there's that. There's, I'm not really thinking of many, right? Oh, they didn't sack the Tamiyo. <laughs> This happens sometimes. People like just don't assume the Emrakul's attacking Tamiyo, and then they just don't check, and then they lose the game because of it. Leyline? Yeah, Leyline doesn't... What is Trick Park doesn't do anything against Leyline, does it? Yeah, the only miss for Gigantha is Devour, but you do need Devour really bad. Oh, they just have a Murktide, though. 5-5 five, five, Murktide. Yeah, Annihilator 7. Trith with the 34 months. Hope you're doing well. So if we sack this fetch, we if they have a bolt, they can take a turn off the clock. Not sure how much that matters. I'm gonna fetch. So I'm a mana short of Casting that this turn, but assuming that these get through, we can cast it next turn. I wonder if I was supposed to just attack. Yeah, we lost the game where we annihilated them down to just a shaman token. Tough. I 
First day of class could be cool. Can loot or fetch colorless mana value less than instant speed for one red, or maybe guy reach. I mean, I don't think that card's very good. Um, it, I agree that it could be cool. But I think that card's pretty bad. And it's like, it's not great, like, looter enabler for Gorios, because you have to have four mana. No consign would be nice. Come on, dude. Not completely dead. They do a bolt. Are there any good flashback cards that we're going to stick with pull from eternity? I know not blue, but something like deep analysis would be cool. Yeah, I, I agree. It'd be cool. I don't know if there's, there's not a lot of room. They put a card on top, which is bad news. I think you're supposed to breach there on their instep. No, no shot. Zero chance that we were supposed to play around consign in this spot. Zero chance. I think to just like bait through the breach on their instep. Like there's, they're kind of likely to not have that much. They only, they have three cards in their hand. Um, yeah, I think, I think no shot that we were supposed to do that. Copy loses discharge. I, I know it loses the discharge. I think I still, I, I'm kind of at a point where I can't play around that well. Maybe, maybe I should have, uh, maybe I should have played around them top decking a, a, one of these. I was hoping to draw another, uh, devourer. It presents lethal. If it gets countered, you play the devourer. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm losing to a bolt with that line. I'm losing to a bolt. We're only we're only weak to like consign. I don't know. Breach plus copy was lethal. Do they not have like untapped snapcaster mage? Uh, 